everyone, welcome on in. Today is going to be a full walkthrough of a project that I've had ready for, honestly, a long time. <laughs> it was a long time in the making. This isn't a super quick project, but it is one I wanted to share because it's really, really cool. If you remember the Mushroom Light video I did a while back, this is very much in that same vein. Today's project is a new headboard that I created for our bedroom. It is something that I wanted to do for a long time, and it is very much in the cottage goth, rustic, witchy, nature style vibes of decor. So if that is your style, this one is definitely for you. Like I said, this one has been a while in the making and it's actually been done for a while and I just haven't edited together the footage, but here it is. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and enjoy the project. Step one of this project is gathering vines. I'm using bittersweet vines because they are incredibly invasive and we have an abundance of them in my yard. They tend to naturally twist and braid together like this and I love that look. So I cut a bunch of them and we're using them for this project. So then I have a tape measure out to measure the full length of the area that I need basically to cover. This is how long it needs to be that I can form the arch around. And now I have this piece here I'm starting with that I'm just going through and kind of binding it together to start to form the shape that I want. I'm just using some twine that I have. And then we will incorporate all of these other vines into this to make hopefully a nice arch shape. So we had to move inside because it started to rain. But basically I took all of those um, individual ones we bound together, twisted them together. I used four total and then like bound those at different spots like so along the way. And now we have what will be the headboard arch. And then I made this moon shape. And then I also have like just a full circle shape in case I want to use that too. But obviously I have not cut the ends off or anything but that's what I think our headboard is gonna be so now I need to kind of let this dry out for a while to keep this shape and then figure out how on earth I'm gonna mount it to the wall several months later okay so here is the situation it's been about five months since my vine arch has been curing so it's very dry and very crispy I still have all like the Kind of binders in place to hold its shape. I'm actually not going to cut those off until it's up because I'm not sure I can cut them off if it will still hold its shape and I don't want to like knock myself out before it's begun. If they have to stay on there that's fine. I can disguise them. So we'll like cut off one and if it's not going to hold its shape then we'll leave the rest. Um, I have a top sheet which is actually an old top sheet we use as like a painting drop cloth over the bed because as you can see sometimes you lose little bits of this as I move it around and I don't want to cover my bed in tiny little stick pieces. That seems not good. So here is the wall we're going to mount this on to kind of give it a nice arched headboard. Um, I don't know if you can see, but I have the tape measure up and then right here, boop, I have measured <laughs> uh, to the center of the wall and marked it with chalk, which by the way, I have the most comically large chalk to work with. But it was all I could find. I know we have smaller chalk and I can't find it anywhere. So that's what we're dealing with. Um, and now we're essentially going to mark the archway out on the wall. So to start with, it's going to be way too tall because I've essentially measured a string to half this height. We're going to anchor it to the center and kind of, you know, do an arch on either side to make like a half circle, which is going to be way too big. But then I'll have a center point that I can measure in the middle of that and kind of help me just freehand the arch after. I'm sure there are probably more technical ways you could get a lower arch, but I don't want to do those because I'm an artist. I wing it and freehand things, and that's what I'm going to do. So as you can see, I put in two and I think I'm going to go with the lower one. It's not perfect, but it's close enough. I'm going to adjust it obviously with the actual arch on the wall. And then the lower one, I have like a moon shaped divine piece I've put together too. That's kind of going to go in the center under the arch. So I want to make sure I've left room for that. Oh, hi Lentil. Did you scare yourself? <laughs> it's 
okay. It's just some string and some chalk. I'm kind of going to do some tests essentially, holding it up to the wall, seeing how the shape is going to go, seeing how much I can bend and manipulate the actual arch since it's quite dry. So there's going to be lots of finagling. <laughs> So that actually didn't take as much finagling as I thought. Also, we've moved back to this angle because I think it's nicer. I'm essentially at this point just going to try and install it on the wall. I have hooks um, that I'm going to be screwing in. Just simple cup hooks. I got a pack of 50 on Amazon in an aged brass color because I thought it would match. And then essentially hooking the parts of the vines over the hooks to keep them in place. Um, I will try and show you what I mean after I get it up there. I'm not really sure how well I'm going to be able to film it because it's kind of going to be very close to the wall. The idea is that the hooks are mostly hidden, but hopefully you'll get the idea. I have my project manager keeping me in check, doing a good job overseeing, um, and I am going to erase the top chalk lines as well before we start just to get them out of my way. Oh, and then I'm also going to grab the garden shears because I'm going to need to be clipping pieces off the bottom of this. In fact, I'm going to clip some off before we start and kind of clip and shape it once it's up on the wall too. So wish me luck. So as expected during this little time lapse, it's very difficult to really see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to try and talk, explain it, and then I will show you close-ups after. But essentially, I measured up to the center and that's where I screwed the first cup hook into the wall. And then I kind of just started going from there. I hooked it over that and then picked places along the arch that I thought they needed to go to give it the right shape. I did at one point here in a minute, I end up having to go get my drill because for some reason there was one cup hook I could not get to screw into the wall. So I had to do like a little pre-hole drill and then get it in there. But that was the only one that gave me any trouble. These are just directly into drywall. I did not use any anchors for them because the vine arch is incredibly light. So I really wasn't worried about weight or it coming out of the drywall at all because there's essentially no weight to this whatsoever. And it seemed quite sturdy as I was putting it up, which is really nice. It wasn't like loose or wiggly or pulling out of the wall at all. So again, I just kind of went around the arch shape that I had put up with the chalk, adjusting as needed, because you can kind of see on the right there that one side dips a little bit because of the vine shape. But I was able to work it out and get the hooks in there and then kind of hook the vines over the cup hooks. It worked exactly as intended, which is always nice. it's up. Honestly, it's a lot more secure than I thought it was going to be. It's super light, so I guess I'm not too surprised, but I am so happy with it. It's beautiful and rustic, which is what I wanted. Here, I'll show you some of the details now of how it's kind of attached to the hooks and things. Okay, if we get in close, you can probably see it best down here. I have the hook that goes into the wall, and then I essentially just loop some of the branch gatherings around it, and that pulls it towards the wall. And I have that going all the way up in different areas. Let me see if we can find another one because, oh, yep, there's one. <laughs> they really are hidden once they're in there, which is kind of the point. Um, there's the central one. In the end, ironically, the center one I started with is like holding one little branch on there, but it still provides support. I think the bulk of this is being held up by this one that has like this super secure amount of it up there. And then they just run all the way down to the end where the end one holds it in place. So pretty simple and I'm glad it worked. I did not have a plan for how this was gonna be held up. It was like, boy, I hope this works out for me. And um, so far it has. So now I'm gonna go through and start clipping these uh, twine pieces I have 
in the hopes that I can remove them all and it will hold its shape. Um, like I said, if I can't, if they kind of start coming apart, I can rebind them and then just cover them with some of the moss or mushroom additions, but that's the next step. Alrighty, I was actually able to cut off most of the binders, which is really cool. And now it's ready to have the moon piece finished off and put underneath. So I'm going to work on that. Editing K popping in. Apparently I don't have any footage of putting the moon piece up on the wall, which I really thought I did. But honestly, it is the exact same process as you just saw. I used the cup hooks, um, you know, arranged them on the wall so I could kind of clip the vines to them and then it was up. So I don't know what happened to that footage, but all right latest update on the headboard is that it now has lights i just got all of these rigged up which i did not film because honestly it's working so close to the wall watching me put these on would have probably been nonsensical like you just wouldn't be able to see anything so i'll just show you but it starts over here where the little battery pack is kind of hidden under this shelf and then i essentially wrapped in like a spiral all the way around so there would be lights that went the length of it and then I came up, kind of extended some from where it ends down here, followed it up to the point I wanted the mushrooms to start and started making all of the stems in kind of different sizes and, you know, getting the stems to be a variety of heights and lengths. And I didn't want them running from end to end because I knew I wouldn't have space for all of that. So if I back up, oof, it's awkward to <laughs> walk along the edge of the bed. Um, if I back up, you can see that they kind of run from point to point on each side. And those ones that stick up will have all of the mushroom caps on them. And then we'll be adding some moss as well. I haven't decided if I want to give the moon lights because obviously that would need a separate um, like battery powered pack of them. And I just don't know that I want to go through the effort of doing that. I do have some, so I might, we'll see how it looks, but that's where we're at for now. So now I need to go through and kind of add in along this top edge here. I need to secure areas in with hot glue just so they don't move around so much. Right now, nothing is glued for the lights. They're just wrapped and set in place, which is good because it means they're really adjustable. Next step, a bit of hot glue, hot glue up the stems, and then we're gonna be sculpting mushroom caps. For sculpting the mushroom caps, I used Sculpey 3, which is just an oven-baked clay, and I used a transparent clay, which wasn't something I even knew existed, but I bought it hoping it would be exactly as it said, transparent once it is baked, and it really is. It was awesome. So I just sculpted these little ball shapes, kind of flattened them out into discs, used some tools to give them a very simple mushroom shape. I am not a sculptor by trade at all. Uh, 3D art is something I enjoy a lot but find very intimidating, so I did the best I could made some cute little mushroom shapes, gave them some little gills, and I also created them in a variety of sizes because I didn't want every single mushroom cap to be exactly the same. So I made like small, medium, large versions and sculpted them out. So all the mushroom caps are now ready. I know they don't look super translucent, but they really are when the light shines through them. And my plan is to essentially like rest them all on each of the stems just to get the placement right of like the sizes because I made kind of like small, medium and large ones. So to get the placement right, I'm just gonna rest them up there and then I'll just do a daub of hot glue on each one. On the mushroom lamps that I had made previously, like the little light pieces, I had done hot glue all along the bases of the wire too, but I actually kind of like the copper wire showing through. So I'm just gonna leave these as is, which saves me not only a ton of glue, but a ton of time. So I'm gonna get the mushrooms lined up how I want them, and then I'll get to gluing them. 
So I started by simply resting the mushroom caps on top, balanced, and then very quickly realized that the second any of them fall, they tend to fall like in and behind the vines. You'll see me struggling heavily here to rescue some that fall in. So eventually I just started kind of placing them in front of the stems that I wanted. So I stopped losing them in the vine structure. And that was just a really good way to make sure that visually I had a good balance between the sizes of the mushroom caps and then they were all lined up and ready to go to just be glued on with a simple drop of hot glue on the top of each mushroom cap and then placing them on the top of the LED light at the angle that I wanted them. So I tried to give them a little bit of variety just so it looks a little bit more organic and natural. And here they are, all glued on, so the next step will be to start placing on moss. Alrighty, so I have staged the moss on, which I think I like for the most part. Like, I'm gonna adjust ones, and because none of it's glued, a lot of it is kind of like puffing up in places where it'll be a little less like raised. I don't know if that makes sense, but you'll see it when it's finished and we'll we'll see how it looks, but I do think the moss is pretty cute overall. Um and this is just like craft moss that you can get. Uh it was just like a bag of it. I dumped it into a little tray. I have tweezers to work with to pull apart. Also, I put towels down because you don't want uh moss bits all over your bed. So <laughs> I think it's coming along nicely. I don't know. I was a little iffy on the moss when I first put it up, but now I think I like it. I definitely like it with the lights on, uh, with like these lights on and the overhead light off. I think it looks really nice. So I'm gonna keep working with it and then I'll glue it all and show you the final look. So here is the finished project during the day and how it looks without the lights on the arch on just in our room during the day. And here is the final product, fully aglow at night. I absolutely love it. It is so beautiful in the dark at nighttime with all the mushrooms and the light it provides is so beautifully soft. It's not like blinding or anything to have it on. Sometimes we turn just the arch on and sometimes we do both with the moon and it's everything I wanted. And that is the new headboard. If you have any questions about the project, please do ask in the comments below. I'm happy to answer anything I can. And if you end up making anything similar or something like this or use this as inspiration for something, let me know. I would love to see what you create. Please do subscribe if you liked today's video. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Take care, my friends. Be well. Until next time.